What does Jesus say? I did not come for you. I have only come for the lost sheep of Israel. But, but, then she goes, she extends it. She says, okay, you, that might be your <coughs> mission. She says, but, even the dogs. Eat from the king's table. Eat. Oh, it's a, in a sense, she's saying, the crumbs. Where, 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 where are the, um, parameters? Where are the parameters? Where can this be, right? Because she's persistent. Where is, the, where is the exception? She was persistent. She wasn't letting that know. And then Jesus, maybe in a sense, contemplates, you know what? Maybe this, you know, she's onto something. Mm -hmm. And he said, let it be, I believe he says, according. let it be to you according to your faith. According. Because God really does respond to faith all day long. Let it be to you according. So some theologians and scholars would argue that Jesus didn't even do the healing. It was her faith who did the healing. Mm. So, Cause he never says, "Now nah, I'm gonna heal you, or I will heal your daughter." The text, if you're just going off of the text, the text says, "Let it be to you according to your faith." It's kind of ambiguous. It doesn't say Jesus healed. It doesn't say when or how. It just says, "Let it be to you according to your faith." And then later, I think in the pericope, it says that the daughter was healed. Right. So, yeah, Jesus exercised his no, and at the same time, he was willing to. Recognize his mission, his priority, and not just please everybody. Yeah, man. So that's yeah. why I want us to I want you to give the people maybe just one or two, you know, or three takeaways um, centered around dealing with betrayal, centered around not people pleasing, yeah, centered around um, loving God, you know, whatever. Just what are maybe some takeaways that the people can say? You know what, John? I'm gonna I'm really try and practice that next week, next, you know, tomorrow. But one of the things I think is impressed upon my heart, um, well, number one, I would say, be thoughtful and be mindful of who you bring into your safe spaces. You're preaching good now. That's one. Because, because, because I have to realize that there is a space that needs to be occupied by covenant brothers and sisters mm. um, that God brings into that particular circle. So what does that look like practically, like on a practical level? Um, be okay with having an invitation for a dinner and you just wanted three people to come and four or five other people find out mm. and they're now, they're offended because you didn't ask them. Mm. Be okay. Let them bring the offense to you. The scripture says they're offended, let them come to you. Mm -hmm. Let them bring it to you and then work it out. But in this season, be true to yourself. Oh, and go, I don't I don't have to extend this for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is who I wanted. This is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> right. I love that's that. that's number one. I love that. Number two, I would say, um, get into the habit of of pausing every time your instinct, we call it discernment today. Yes. Every time that gut feeling pops up, pause immediately mm. so you don't miss it. Because most of the time, it is not invasive, it doesn't, it's not overly aggressive, it's subtle, normally. When you feel it, pause. Mm. Stop, whatever you're doing. If, you, if, you're, if you're texting on the phone and you have an unction, if you if you're talking to somebody and you have an unction, pause. I have one since we've been sitting here, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you said, I think this should be called the garden. Like, from, like, me too. It, like inside of me, it went boom, like it was like a stamp. Same. Like, like I'm good with that, the garden. The garden is the space where I have to make a decision. The garden is the space where I gotta make a choice. Yeah. Right? And that is happening right now. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so yeah. not to deviate, this yeah. is something you got to realize. Mm. So, what is, what is God saying? Why, why would he, why would he, why would he bring up the garden piece? Some of my, my brother would disagree with this. Some theologians would disagree with it. But I love this part. God says you're gonna have whatever you want in this garden, every tree. Mm. Just don't eat this one. He says. Now, the interesting thing about this story that always gets me. Yeah is that one of the trees that was acceptable to eat from right. 
was a tree of life. That wasn't one that he said you cannot eat. He never said don't eat that one. Huh. But it's interesting that all out of everything that they choose, they choose knowledge of good and evil over life, just like we choose. Huh. Knowledge of good and evil over life. This is the place where we sit down and we talk about why we don't choose life. Mm. Why do we always make it so hard? And it doesn't have to be. <laughs> and, and then they get kicked out of the garden because lest they eat of the tree of life now in the state that they're in mm. and live in that state forever and never die. D like live a life of death but never die. He's like, I can't let you do that. I gotta push you out the garden. Mm. You know? Yeah. That was perfect. Wrong, good. That, that deviated from my, I'm, okay, going back to, sorry about that. that, that <laughs> no, that's good. Come on, man. So, <clears throat> so, I think today I want to leave it at those two. Yeah. Because I don't want to over, overdo it. Watch who you bring into your circles and process and pause when you have an unction or a, a instinct that happens around your gut area. You have a, you call it a gut feeling. Mm. Take a pause before you make a move. That's good. I think those but those two yeah. things will help you with, with your choices that you make. Yeah. So we're here. We just heard from John. Um, incredibly profound and just putting it in layman's terms. Being very careful of who we put into our circles. And also when we feel that discernment, when we feel that gut feeling, when we feel that unctioning, just pause. Just pause. You never know what God is trying to just get you to see. And it's usually something that's for the betterment of your life. Yeah. You know? And that really, when you said those two, maybe this would be next week's or it made me think about relationships. And not even just romantic. <laughs> yeah. But also romantic <coughs> is very important because most betrayal happens in absolutely happens in romantic relationships where we give our heart to somebody or vice versa. And we don't know how to properly deal with somebody's heart and we break their heart. Or somebody doesn't know how to properly deal with our heart mm -hmm. and they break. And that, and there's so much pain there and people don't actually recognize the pain. And what do they do? They just take it into the next relationship. Mm. Next week, <laughs> come to the garden. <laughs> come to the garden. Uh, this is Deji Olajide. John um, DeCure. John DeCure. And uh, we are signing off. Check it out. Tell a friend. Tell your mama. Oh. <laughs> Tell everybody. Come up in here because you are going to leave uh, better than the way you came. Because I feel that. Me too. That's the thing. I do. I do too. So um, how can we connect with you, follow up with you? What is your information? What things great, are you doing? Great, great, great. Um, so my, some of my uh, social media handles, PJ Decure, P-J-D-E-C-U-I-R. That's my Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you just type in my name, Jonathan DeCure, J O N A T H A N, DeCure, it'll pop up. Or you can do Pastor Jonathan DeCure if you, if you want to go the pastor route. Um, I'm a little bit more thuggish on the on my personal <laughs> page. If you want to get if you want to get involved with I that, I need thuggish. I like if thuggish. You need that? Then go to the to the Jonathan DeCure uh, page. Um, that's that's that. I think more importantly, yes. Um, we have this thing the Lord gave us called Session 5. Right? I'm so excited. And the reason why we call it, we use the word session, yeah. is because when you go to counseling, they call it a session. That's right. right. But then also, it's a music studio, you call it, we call it a session. Huh. So we, we play on the word session because... I love that. Because we're like, we, we want harmony with God, right? Mm. Um, but we, we want to give you a feel almost like in, in it where you're, you almost feel like you're in counseling, right? <sighs> in these five areas, spiritual, mental, emotional, uh, physical, and financial. Mm. And see, what we say is what we've been taught is that we've been taught to separate the spirit from everything else. We've been taught to go, hey man, I prayed and I fasted, and I did all this stuff so I'm good, so I can put whatever I want in my body, I can eat however I want, my credit score can be low. Um, but what we're saying is no, wholeness means that all these things are connecting, all these things are integrated. Mm. And yeah. so you can I'm seeing how that is also something God is doing. Yeah, with the future of no longer isolating art, music, uh, food, ecology, the, the world around us, mm -hmm. bringing them all together, which is really where we're all supposed to be in the first, especially finances. Absolutely. Because you know, college folks, all folks, 
needs some type of tweaking with the way they budget, you, the way they spend. God is on me right now, bro. Oh. That's another kind. That's, that's another, yeah. Come to the garden. Come to the garden. <laughs> come to the garden. Um, and you can find me on Twitter, D O L A J I D E three. That's the same for Instagram as well. Um, Facebook, just search uh, Dejiolajde, D E J I O L A J I D E. 